Anyone that pays even a little attention to what I post on YouTube or on the 49ccscoot.com forum is likely to know that I'm a fan of 1E40 QMB based two stroke big bore stroker engines around 90 to 110 cc. Standard 49cc versions of this engine use a 39.2mm stroke, and strokers usually range from 41.4 to 48mm stroke. Stock 49cc cranks that I've measured had right around 72mm diameter crank webs, and the crank cases measured just over 74mm inside diameter to leave a little over 1mm of clearance between the crank and cases. Stroker cranks are typically larger and don't fit into the cases at all. Some of the smaller stroker kits, like 41.4 or 42mm, may be able to fit, but usually the longer strokes won't. Most of my stroker cranks are more than 78mm in diameter and not even close to fitting in a 49cc case. The exact sizes of cranks and cases will vary from one engine to the next to some degree, but expect to need the cases cut for more clearance if you plan on building something with a longer stroke, especially if the stroke is 42mm or greater. I should quickly note that you may also need to clearance the cases for large bore cylinders that match stroker cranks, depending exactly what you're building. Bores up to 48mm usually fit without material removal, but the 50-54mm to 54 millimeter bores common in 90cc and larger stroker engines will require enlarging the cases to accept them. That's a different process than I'm covering in this video, but I wanted to mention it for anyone interested in building a large, horizontal Minarelli engine. Back on topic, there are multiple ways to get a stroker crank to fit inside of the crank cases. The easiest option for some may be to replace the crank cases. Some youth ATVs were available in 90cc versions that will accept many stroker cranks and big bores without any cutting. Unfortunately, those are mostly short case engines, similar to what you'd typically find in small scooters with 10 inch wheels and standard or low profile tires like the Vento Zip or Kiwi Venus, for example. Those engines may also lack provisions for a cable-operated rear brake and typically use bushings for the engine mount that may need to be swapped out for bearings, depending on the scooter that it's being swapped into. Check the axle style if you want to use the ATV gears, which may be good for top speed since many have an 8.8 .8 to 1 final drive ratio. Some have sprockets that slide over an axle that is similar to a scooter's axle. Others have an output shaft designed for a bolt-on sprocket that won't work with scooter wheels. Avoid engines equipped with reverse, which will be obvious because the gearbox is much larger. There are some youth ATVs with what I call stretched short case engines. They are similar in length to long case engines, but they still use a short case style gearbox. They get their added length by having a longer distance between the front and rear pulleys, and they can fit 12 inch wheels with standard tires just like a long case. The main drawback of that style of engine, in my opinion, is the required belt length. They need a longer belt because of the pulleys being further apart, and it's harder to find and often more expensive than more common belts. They also have no option for an overrange belt that I know of, which could be a deal breaker if you want to use an overrange CVT kit. The only ways that I know of to find a set of long 90cc cases are to find a scooter that has one in it or to buy a whole 90cc engine. At least if you're in the US, good luck finding a scooter with a 90cc long case. The most common that I have heard of and own is the Vento Triton made for the Mexico market, and they are not easy to find. Their gauges were marked in kilometers per hour as the primary measurement instead of miles per hour and the cases were marked with 1E52 QMG instead of the typical 1E40 QMB. From what I've seen, the brand new 90cc long case engines from China are becoming scarce now as well. Some have said that they are no longer being imported, while others claim they may still be able to get a few. The only other option that I know of for a long case that should accept a big bore and stroke is a 1E40 FM or a 1E40 QMB hyphen A engine. They were sold as 49ccs but used cases ready to accept larger boards and strokes. Yamati Eurostrata 50s were known to have them, but I'm not sure if all Eurostratas did. You would need to check the engine code. Linhai Powermax 50s may also have the FM or QMB hyphen A engines, but they should be short cases. Some may think of the 100cc Yamaha BWS, Zuma, Aerox, or Grand Axis, but those are a bit different platform. 
They have some similarities, but they have a wider cylinder stud spacing and use larger cranks and bearings, so they aren't compatible with 90cc builds. They also seem to be hard to come by in the US and expensive if they are located. If you aren't looking to replace the 49cc cases for your stroker build, then we're back to cutting the cases. You could have a machine shop do the cutting for you, but that may get expensive. When I built my first stroker engine, I had a local machinist do the work for me. I ended up having the crank cut down a little to reduce its diameter and to keep more meat on the cases, which at the time I thought may be necessary. I have since done many strokers without cutting the crank at all. That raised the bill, but it ended up costing me $280 from a machinist that usually charged me pretty low prices. The cutting itself is not difficult for a machinist on a mill or lathe, but it takes a great deal of setup time and their time costs money. You could do the case cutting yourself if you have access to a machine shop, but 190 mech from the 49ccscoot.com forum commented that it takes him multiple hours to cut cases on a vertical mill because of all the setup time involved. What I've done for all of mine aside from the first is to cut the cases freehand with a rotary tool and or drill along with carbide burrs and sanding bits. That method also takes hours to get a good result and it's not likely that the finished product will be perfectly concentric or cut straight all the way across the cases. Minor imperfections may not look great, but they haven't caused me any problems or substantial power loss that I'm aware of. I typically use small bits that fit into the handpiece from my Fordham rotary tool, but you can remove material faster with larger burrs. Use caution with powerful tools and large burrs though, because it's easy to remove too much material with them. I would also advise using burrs without cutting flutes on their ends, because you don't want to cut into the sides of the cases when you're trying to work all the way to the outer edges. Old Geek from the 49ccscoot.com forum made his own cutting tool using pieces from an old crank, a rotary tool, T-slotted bar, and some other hardware. He says he can cut a set of cases with it in about an hour using a powerful tool and large burrs. Since I recently got a mini lathe thanks to the generosity of a small group of forum members, I've been wanting to make some sort of case cutting tool of my own that may make the job quicker and easier. After some searching, planning, and fabricating, this is what I ended up with. This shaft was cut from 4130 steel with two sections just shy of 20mm that allow it to move through bearings with a 20mm inside diameter, like the 6204 crank bearings in these engines. The divider between those sections is larger to act as a stop. I drilled it to accept a 3 8 inch boring bar to do the cutting and added a set screw to keep the bar secure. Well actually, I attempted to add a second set screw, but managed to snap off a tap in the process. It wasn't worth the effort to try and remove the hardened tap because the bar was secure with just one screw. The boring bar is from Shars and uses carbide inserts. I chose it because the cutter was offset enough that it could cut to the edge of a case, even with the crank bearing sitting a bit proud. I cut it shorter so that it would fit inside of the cases. The end of the shaft was machined to under one half of an inch to fit inside of a drill chuck. One section of the shaft will pass through a bearing installed in the case, but I also wanted a second bearing for added support after seeing how much play there was when only using the crank bearing. I made a plate out of 8th inch thick by 1.5 inch wide steel flat bar that fit across the case and drilled it for bolts and for the shaft to pass through. I used a piece of steel pipe that I bored on the lathe to make a seat for a 6904 bearing and welded it to the plate. The bearing has a 20mm ID, but a little smaller OD than the crank bearing to make it a better fit on the bar. I partially installed the bearing and tack welded the seat on to be certain that the placement was correct before adding more welds. Here's the difference in play when using one versus two bearings. Some nuts, bolts, washers, and spacers complete my case cutting tool. The spacers were cut from 6061 aluminum to 30 mm lengths and one was ground flat on one side after I realized that clearance was needed so the cutter didn't hit it on deeper cuts. You may also notice in some of the videos that I'm using a shielded bearing instead of the typical open crank bearing so that I don't mess up a bearing with metal debris from cutting. An open bearing could be used, but it would be ruined unless it was protected. I should also note that I did not use dummy bearings when cutting. For those that don't know, 
Dummy bearings are bearings that have been ground or sanded to either a smaller outside diameter or larger inside diameter or both. They are often used for mocking up engines or checking fit because they can be dropped into cases or slid onto cranks without heating or pressing. I thought dummy bearings could spin in the crankcase if the fit wasn't snug or if the bearing seized, and I'd rather spend a little extra time on bearing removal and installation rather than risking seat damage. I didn't take any video of me making the tool because I didn't really think it would be successful after having some intelligent people tell me that it was unlikely to work well or possibly not worth the effort, but I did take pictures along the way. I will link to a thread on the forum with pics and more info about the build as well as measurements and the template that I made for the plate. Here's a look at the tool being set up. The shaft with boring bar drops in through the crank bearing. Then the plate bolts on, using the spacers below it, and it's ready to be chucked up into a drill. The case should be secured to something stable to prevent it from moving around as well. I used a large C-clamp to attach it to the workbench. Aside from that, the only setup left is to figure out where the boring bar needs to be set to remove the right amount of material. Normally you'd have some crankcase ID to shoot for, and you would work toward that in steps. In this instance, I just wanted to find out if the tool actually worked, and I wanted to push it a bit to stress it, rather than taking a small bite. I set the cutter up to take off around 25 thousandths of an inch, which actually cuts double that from the total diameter, so I was attempting to cut more than a millimeter off on the first pass. I added some oil to the cutter and cases and started off to find out if the tool was a success or a failure. I was very happy after removing just a small amount of material and stopped to take a few pics of the progress just in case things went to hell after that. Then I added more lube and got back to cutting. I found that the tool needed to be carefully controlled because of the gap in the cases that could allow it to fall and then smack into the wall. It wasn't a major problem for me, but it did make concentration and a firm grip on the drill necessary. I believe it could be better controlled in a drill press, but the way this is set up it needs to be turned in reverse, and my drill press has no reverse. I stopped cutting once the tool had scribed a mark across the side of the case. I was a little surprised that I had managed to make a whole pass without any major incidents. The profile of the tool did cut a bit of a groove into the side of the case. A different cutter could probably be used, or less material could be removed on each pass to get a smoother finish at the ending point. You could even adjust the cutter and touch that area up if you desired. I found that turning it by hand could remove material if you wanted to be cautious. The finish on the cut wasn't perfect, but it wasn't bad either. I think it looks worse than it is in the photos and videos. A more controlled cutting speed, motion, and depth would likely provide a better finish, but it would be fine as is. I wanted to make one more pass to make sure I didn't just get lucky on the first, so I set it up again to take off another big chunk and started making chips. I got through another full pass with no real hiccup. I cleaned the case up and took a few picks. Then I grabbed part of an old crank to see how far off it was, and it actually fit after just two passes. It didn't have much clearance around it at that point, so it would need another pass, but I was pleased with how well the tool removed large amounts of aluminum. I looked over the videos of the cutting, and it only took about 20 minutes of actual cutting related work to make the two passes, so it's definitely quicker than I could get a crank to fit with my rotary tool. I would imagine that one could do a set of cases in an hour if desired, but I don't think work like this should be timed or rushed. Even though it should work, I wanted to try the tool on the small case half as well to be certain. 
Flipping the plate over allows it to work on the small half, and long bolts must be inserted from the outside with nuts installed over the plate since there are no threads on the small case. Once again I set the tool up to make a deep cut. It was a little more awkward this time because the case had been cut by hand and was uneven, but it still worked alright. After trying the tool on both case halves, curiosity got the best of me and I wanted to try one more thing. I had to know how much different it would be to use a tool with only the crank bearing as support because that would simplify the design. I set the tool up to make a small cut compared to the ones that I had been making and fired it up in the drill once again. It was harder to control and snagged and grabbed because of the wobble. It still cut the cases, and it would be doable, but the surface finish was far inferior compared to what I got when using two bearings. You can see the jagged edge left in this picture. My conclusion is, it is worth the time to come up with a second support for this type of tool, at least if it must be used by hand. Perhaps it wouldn't be so bad if used in a drill press. That's it for now. Please like, favorite, and subscribe for more if you enjoyed the video or found it useful. If you have ideas for a case cutter or other tool, or have made your own, tell us about it in the comments or on the forum at 49ccscoot.com. Thanks for watching.